Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Zach and today we are going to look at this. So what is it? What does it do? How does it work? And what particular aircraft did this one come from? So first let's take a look at what we can see. On the decal here the obvious thing is voltage regulator. Uh, it is made in USA, Tetherboard, New Jersey. Uh, we've got a serial number here. And the volts are set at 28 volts DC. Uh, it was made by the Bendix Aviation Corporation. Uh, they've been around since the 1930s. And they made a lot of components during the wartime. Um, they no, no longer exist, but these components, they are still in circulation and they are still used on aircraft today. So what else can we see that is interesting? There's a screw here. And what this is, is a variable resistor, otherwise known as a potentiometer. And what you're doing here when you're adjusting this is you are increasing or decreasing the resistance which in turn increases or decreases the voltage because V equals IR. This is only a minor adjustment, a fine tune adjustment and you can see here that a technician has put a texture mark on there to line up with the screw head and the reason for this is these components were installed on multiple aircraft, not just one type. So for the particular aircraft that this one was installed on, that's the setting that they wanted. Uh, you'll also see there's a lot of red paint everywhere. It's on all the screws, it's all the nuts, it's on all the fasteners. This is known as torque stripe. And when aircraft are operating, there are lots of vibrations and things can come loose. And with aircraft maintenance, it's all about preventing or reducing the probability of something failing. So this torque stripe acts as a indicator when technicians are doing their inspections. They can quickly see if something isn't where it is supposed to be. And you'll also notice this wire here. There are, there's actually holes in the screws. You can see there and the wire passes through. And as we know with screws in general, it is lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. So this wire, known as lock wire, is physically holding these screws in place so they won't go anywhere. All this is standard aviation practices. Um, there are whole manuals devoted to the specifics of how all this is done, right down to the configuration of the washers, lock washers, screws, even the torque value that you torque these screws, individual screws and nuts up to. Everything is dictated in, in manuals. Uh, for example, this wire here, uh, just using my eye, I, I think it's... 20 thou lock wire, which is short for 20 thousandths of an inch. Uh, the manual will dictate how many turns per inch or twists per inch you can, you're can you allowed to have for this particular gauge wire. The manual also dictates what gauge wire you will need to use for what size screws or torque value of the screws. Everything is written in procedures right down to the minute 
detail. And if you're wondering, for these lock wires, uh, technicians use a special tool called lock wire pliers. The pliers clamp onto the wire and with this piece in the middle of the shaft here, you pull that and the pliers lock onto the wire and then you pull the knob at the end here which rotates the pliers and the wire together making your lock wire. So this regulator is more specifically known as a carbon pile voltage regulator. These are old analog tech and are no longer used in modern aircraft. Uh, so what does it do and how does it work? The aircraft engine as it is running not only spins the propeller blades but it also powers many ancillary systems uh, including DC generators which power the aircraft. Because the engines will be constantly revving at different speeds the generator output will fluctuate um, which is undesirable. The purpose of this regulator is to smooth the electrical output to make a constant electrical flow. So inside the regulator, there is a number of carbon discs that are pressed together by a spring. When the discs are compressed, the resistance is low, meaning that current can pass through easily. A solenoid is connected to the spring and when energized by increased output from the generator, it pulls the carbon discs wider apart, thus increasing the resistance and lowering the output. It really is a clever device as it's self-regulating. You can imagine it just like a tap and the water or flow of water is the electrical flow. This device is just making the water flow at a constant rate. This particular regulator was salvaged from a Royal Australian Air Force de Havilland DHC-4 Caribou. Uh, the Caribou was in RAF service from 1964 to 2009. Uh, the, we'll do a separate video on the RAF Caribou history later on. That, by the way, is the cleanest caribou engine I have ever seen. I, I don't know what is going on there. I believe these parts were also used in B-17 bombers and Hueys, but correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new about aircraft. Till next time.